Virtuous pagan is a concept in Christian theology that addressed the problem of pagans who were never evangelized and consequently during their lifetime had no opportunity to recognize Christ, but nevertheless led virtuous lives, so that it seemed objectionable to consider them damned. It is thus analogous to that of the «righteous Gentile» in Judaism and Hanifs in Islam. A modern Catholic rendering of this is known as «anonymous Christianity» in the theology of Karl Rahner. Prominent examples of virtuous pagans are Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, Trajan, and Virgil. Dante Alighieri, in his Divine Comedy, places a number of virtuous pagans to the first circle of hell analogous to Limbo, including Homer, Horace, Ovid, and Lucan, and notably also Saladin, a Muslim, although Muslims are monotheists not pagans, and Saladin knew of Christianity. Even so Dante placed the pagan emperor Trajan in Paradise and Cato, a suicide, with Statius in Purgatory, while Virgil, whose poetry was thought to prophesy the Christian epic, he consigned to hell. Francis A. Sullivan believes that early Christian writers did not preclude virtuous pagans from possibly attaining salvation, but he agrees that it is possible that the patristic fathers, had they been asked directly, may have denied that pagans and Jews could become partakers of eternal life. Virtuous paganism became relevant to Romanticism with its interest in North European mythology or enthusiasm for the rediscovered pagan ethos of the Icelandic sagas. Tom Shippey argues that the fiction of J. R. R. Tolkien is significantly based on such a concept of virtuous paganism. Tolkien was rather disturbed by an Armageddon which the wrong side wins. Ragnarok. He saw that the ethos it represented could be used by either side, as indeed it was in the deliberate cultivation of Goethe Demering by the Nazi leadership a few years later. Nevertheless, it did provide an image of heroic virtue which could exist and could be admired outside the Christian framework. In some respects, as you can see in his 1936 Beowulf lecture, see essays 24 to 25, the Old Norse theory of courage might even be regarded as ethically superior to the classical, if not to the Christian worldview, in that it demanded commitment to virtue without any offer of lasting reward. He also felt that Old Norse mythology provided a model for what one might call virtuous paganism, which was heathen, conscious of its own inadequacy, and so ripe for conversion, but not yet sunk into despair and disillusionment like so much of 20th century post Christian literature, a mythology which was in its way light hearted. Topic see also topic Christianity and paganism, fate of the unlearned Hanif, original monotheism, pagan worthies, topic references, topic, topic, topic further reading, topic Cindy L. Vito, The Virtuous Pagan in Middle English. Literature, Diane Publishing, 1989, ISBN 978-0-87169-795-0. Vito, Cindy L. The Virtuous Pagan. In Middle English Literature. Transactions of the American Philosophical Society. 79 5, 1-100. doi, 10.2307, 1006545. JSTOR 1006545. Irwin, T. H. 1999. Splendid Vices? Medieval Philosophy and Theology. 8 105-27. doi, 10.5840, Medievalt 1999825. Irwin, T. H. 